How to do problem set two. Putting supply and demand together. Assuming perfect competition. Okay, so you're in Paris. Junior year abroad. After college, whatever. You go wandering. One of the best things to do in Paris is just wander around, look at the pretty streets and the, and the buildings and... The pastry shops. There are pastry shops all over Paris. Somebody may get the idea that Paris pastries, Paris croissants, are a perfectly competitive market where each patisserie can sell stuff without having any effect on the price. Somebody might think that. They may think that I'm a small pastry shop, um, a small producer of basically the same croissant as everybody else. What's a few more croissants? I'll produce some more croissants. It won't change the price any. It won't have any lasting effect. This perfectly competitive, or thinking that perfectly competitive, producer will make croissants whenever the price of the croissant is greater than the, or equal to the marginal cost of making the croissant. They will follow their marginal cost curve. If the price is down here, they'll make one. Price is here, they'll make two. Price is here, they'll make three. And they keep on going up until this point. <gasps> That's it. They stop. They don't go over here because there the cost of the croissants is greater than the price they could get for them. No, they stop here, right at the point where the price of croissants just equals the cost of making that marginal croissant. They stop at seven croissants, and they sell these seven croissants at price that, well, our purposes, given the numbers we've been working with, they sell the croissant for $15.94. Honestly, how many croissants are you going to be able to sell for $15.94? That's a dumb number. I should have come up with some better numbers than that. You know, the average croissant sells for like a dollar, two dollars. You know, um, it's got to be a really, really good croissant for $15.94. But whatever. That's the price we're working with. They produce up to the point where the marginal cost equals fifteen ninety four, and they stop. They don't make any more because they cost more than they can sell them for, and they don't make less because they think that each of these croissants, they think the price of the croissant is greater than the cost of making them. Here's the cost. Here are the prices. They think they're making money on they put together supply and demand. Here's the demand curve, marginal utility curve, same as the demand curve. This is how much you'll pay, how much people will pay. Here are the workers they need, the marginal workers that they'll need, marginal cost, and keep on going. One, two, three, each of these croissants, they're making them for less than the price, then they stop here at 1594. What happens when you change the wage rates? Well, change the wage rates, suddenly workers are more expensive, the marginal cost is higher. What happens if you make workers more productive? They can make more croissants. Well, suddenly you don't need as many workers. You need 0.15 workers instead of 0 0.2. 0 0.35 workers for two croissants. In oh, that's marginal workers instead of 0.47, forget that. 0.61 instead of 0.82. So the marginal workers are less, the marginal cost is less if your workers are more productive. Higher wages shifts the marginal cost curve up. Higher prices for every croissant that you're willing to make. More productivity shifts your curve down. You'll make more croissants at any price. Given the fixed demand curve, Higher productivity, higher wages, higher prices, fewer croissants made, 
higher productivity, lower prices, and more consoles made. Straightforward and simple once you take it one step at a time. Thank you.